I'm Miroslav Vitus. You are watching for BassPlaysOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. We are on location in Fort Collins, Colorado, and I am here with a true music legend, a true bass legend, Miroslav Vitus. How are you, Miroslav? I'm fine, thank you. Why don't we start from the beginning? Growing up in Czechoslovakia, tell me about your musical upbringing and how you became a bass player. Well, I started to play violin at, at uh, six, when I was six years old, and I played it till, uh, till about nine or something. Then I moved over to the piano, and around when I was 10 or something, I, I was visiting my uncle and he had a bass in, the, in, in, uh, in his house, you know, in, in the corner. And uh, it, for some reason, I just picked it up and I started playing and I, I played it the whole visit. In the end, he says, you know, why don't you just take it home? You know, not an easy thing to transport. No, but, you know, it, will walk, it was about a uh, half, 20 minute walk anyway. <laughs> Still, I don't imagine you had a wheel on it. No, but you know, you know how it is. You put it on the shoulder and you go. That's, that's how we used to do it. So I took the bass home and, I, I, you know, I was uh, hooked on it ever since, really. So how did your career get rolling in terms of uh, performing and, and actually doing gigs and, and playing for money? Did you play in orchestras? Did you do jazz gigs? I mean, what were you doing at first? Well, first I started to play uh, with my father because he had a band. So we played, my brother was a drummer, so we, we played uh, with my father first. Then we started something which was called Junior Trio. I don't know if you are aware of that. Say it again. Junior Trio. Junior Trio. And that was Jan Hammer, myself and my brother. Right. Alan. Right? Uh, yes, Alan, yeah. yeah. We were 14, 15, 16 years old or something like that. And uh, we played, and we played really good, actually. Sometimes when I hear it, I'm like, wow. We played original songs back then, arranged, uh, you know, we, we, we were drawing material from the folk, folk folklore already back in 1964 you know I mean 30 years before anybody else was doing that we were already doing that in 64 yeah. you know it's I like hear. wow so um, I did that then I then I started to play with the Dixieland of Mr. Jelinek Jirka Jelinek was was the name he was uh, like one of those uh, kind of a uh, trumpet very excellent trumpet player and a showman too, you know, in the theater, and uh, he was copying Louis Armstrong, almost exactly the same. It's unbelievable. Beautiful guy. And so we, we used to, my brother and me joined his group, and you know, we played concerts all over Czechoslovakia. And at the same time, I was, I was doing competition swimming. So right. I was going to the conservatory, I was uh, playing with, with uh, jazz, I was playing Dixieland. Uh, I was working since I was 14 years old and uh, doing this and uh, also uh, going you know basically professional professional swimming when, when did you come over to the u.s 1966 august 1966 i came and uh, one year later i was uh, i started to play with heavy man there was actually a a, a very uh, fortunate occasion i was playing with bob Berkmeyer and clark terry in chicago and uh, at, the, at, the, at the same time, there was a jazz festival in Chicago, you know. Yeah. So Miles played in opera. So he came to the club because he was friends with Clark Terry, you know, for a long time. Yeah. And uh, after, after we played the set, uh, Clark Terry takes me to the dressing room and he says, uh, sit down, I have something to tell you. He says, sit down. Oh, what did I do wrong, you know? So I said, I sit down, okay. So uh, he said, hey, Miles wants you to play with him next week. It was just like, wow, wow boom, bang. It was that. So that happened, and the next day, Herbie Mann comes, same thing, he played, a, you know, the first festival concert in Opera House, and, and they came down to the club, London House was called, to, to see Clark and, uh, and Bob Brockmeyer, of course. Uh, great guy, really, both of them fantastic people. And uh, he asked me if I wouldn't, if Reggie Rockman was leaving the band, so he asked me if I would uh, be interested in joining his group. So all this happened in two days, after about a year and a half waiting of, not, of nothing, almost. And boom, I returned back to New York, and ever since then, pew! Ask you, tell me about Weather Report. You are a founding member of Weather Report. I'd like to hear something about Wayne Shorter, or maybe even better, something about Joe Zawinul that, that, that they don't know, that we don't know. What can you share with us? Well, that would be, of course, very lengthy. <laughs> so I'm going to just make it short. Uh, I think I'm going to correct uh, some, uh, s what some people think. The way the weather report happened is that uh, 
I called Wayne because Wayne was available. He left Mars, and I was free at, at, the, at the same time. Also, I left Mars at that point, and uh, uh, I was there just very shortly because Mars didn't uh, appreciate the way I was playing. So I got fired actually because he wanted me to keep the same stuff over and over again. Yeah. And we played a fantastic concert, and I was talking to him, and it was great. The music was unbelievable. He was answering, and it was communi communication incredible. But he didn't like it he, because he wanted the bass player to boom, boom, right. you know, keep keep the same thing because he was starting to go towards the commercial way. So, uh, consequently, uh, 25 years later, Marcus Miller started doing that, but, but it was okay then, you know. So. Yeah. I, mean, I guess it was a bit ahead of the time. And yes. The way it happened that I called Wayne because he was available, and uh, he says, "Yeah, that's uh, ask him if you would like to have a band together with me, you know, or us together having a band like that." And he says, "Well, that sounds very interesting." So about two or three weeks later, he calls me back and he says, uh, "What would you think if Joe Zavinul would come in with us and we three of us would have the band?" So I said, "Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay, why not? Let's, we can do it that way too." So this is how Weather Report happened. Joe Zavinu's story is a different one. He, they, he said that he started Weather Report, but you know, what I'm saying here is what really happened. What do you think of the way that band evolved after you and then Alfonso Johnson and of course Jocko and then Victor Bailey and, and how the, the music changed over time? What, what are your thoughts on this, uh, on seeing this development and this unfolding? Well, at the time, I didn't know that, but now that I look back on it, I, I realize that uh, this is really something very interesting because, uh, first of all, when I left, uh, Joe and Wayne decided that they don't want to work with me anymore because uh, they wanted to have more commercial way. They wanted a bass player who, who was going to stay with the rhythm section and uh, so they would get kind of more commercial sound, I would think. So, so they. Joe called me up and says, you know, we don't want to work anymore, blah, 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 blah. So I said, it's okay, if you don't want to work me, it's fine. But uh, Weather Report is, uh, it's our band. You know, I have a contract, I have, uh, I'm the owner of the Weather Report and all that. And uh, this, is, this is something which really happened, was not very good, because uh, they didn't honor that. You know, they didn't honor that, they stopped paying me my royalties, it was like horrible. I mean, they completely dogged me. You know, but to get back to the to the um, to the point of music is that uh, the reason why Weather Report or music main reason why Weather Report's music was so different at that time was because of the way the bass was playing. Because I was not playing like a bass player who would just keep the background. You know, I was stepping up front and I was challenging, not challenging. You could call it challenging, but I was talking. I was talking to Wayne. I was talking to Joe. So it was a completely different way of playing, and they, they, and they had to play differently. They answered me. So it, was a, it started to be a conversation, and not no longer a rhythm section and a band, you know, like an old, old kind of a way of roles, playing roles. So this was the reason why I don't want to take a credit for, for, for that new, new music, because this is not what I mean. But that was the reason why that music was so different, because the bass was playing completely different, and they had to do something completely different. So after I left, they they didn't stay with that, of course, because no other bass player played this way, and that's why they actually didn't want to work with me anymore because I played that way. So uh, they got on to more, more commercial way, you know. F interesting thing is that they were still talking about well, you know, impro improvisation, collective improvisation, and all that. But uh, this is what we did. But uh, this is not no longer what they did uh, when uh, when they went on the commercial path, you know. So this is, this, is, this is what I think about that. When Jaco joined the band, I think, I think there was something very, very good because Jaco was really, you know, close to genius level, you know, fantastic musician. And uh, Joe had a problem with that, you know. Joe had a problem with uh, somebody who's really great. It was always a problem for Joe because uh, uh, he wanted to be the mister, you know, the, the, main, the main man. Mm. So he had a problem with me, he had a problem with Jaco, he had a problem with some other people too. Interesting story. Uh, tell me about your equipment. You, you mentioned you moved your whole studio. Uh, I saw Barry Colstein a little bit. I know you have uh, some ties with him. You use his bass, he made you a bass? Or, uh, tell me that story. Yes, it's a, it's a Busetto bass. Uh, you know the bass, right? Yeah. 
It's a copy of Scott Lafaro's bass uh, in a, on a small version of it. It has exactly the same menzur, but it is a uh, much smaller body and all that, but it's the same. And I play sitting, sitting down, I play like a cello. And it's for me it's fantastic, it's, it's a great instrument. I have it set up almost like a guitar, so low, so that I can play so, I can play so fast on it, it's like a Ferrari for me. It's like driving a Ferrari or something. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so it's really, it's really, it's really a very, very good way. Not only for, for basically the reason, uh, the first was to get it because of the traveling, because it was smaller. Yeah. But uh, as, as I went alone, after I started playing it, I, d I never went back to the basses. My, both of my basses are looking at me at home now, <laughs> talking about when are you going to play me again? <laughs> you know, and I, and I'm just uh, okay, and I'm I'm playing my Ferrari. You know, <laughs> my goal is always to get the very beautiful sound you know beautiful and I, I don't mean power sound it's not about power it's about uh, the beauty the sustain the length and the quality and the feeling in the sound this is what what is what I'm after definitely I'm not after any kind of uh, commercial uh, reasons or uh, I didn't I never let commercial music affect my playing that's one thing which I never let to happen because uh, uh, music is what keeps me alive. It it gives me injection. But the true music, which is, which is coming from in my inside, from my soul, you know, the music plays me, and I'm playing the music. Beautiful. So, but and if I start playing something else, I I feel like I have sold out, and of I, I feel like well, completely empty. I have, what am I doing? You know, it's it's like nine to five job or something. Miroslav Vitus, it's so great getting to catch up Thank with you. you, getting to know you after enjoying your music for so many years. Thank you so much, and uh, wish you much luck and continued success to you always. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. On location in Fort Collins, Colorado, with music legend, bass legend Miroslav Vitus, I'm John Liebman. You're watching ForBassPlayersOnly.com. <laughs> Thank you. 